Hi there, I'm Teresa Marone, and I'm the Learn To Queen. The niche and passion of my expertise is creating conscious content in the self-help and personal development fields, because I truly believe that conscious content creation by people like you is changing the world. Join me and my guest expert collaboration partners for an inside look at the problem-solving industry. We want to help you so that you can help others. Hi there. This is Learn to Podcast for Profit. I'm your host, Teresa Marone, and I'm the content marketing expert with Podcasting by Professionals. Now, we are discussing if you want to start a podcast for fun and profit, and if you do, you're in the right place, because we want to encourage you to consider starting your own show in 2015, especially if you're a speaker, because this really might be the right thing for you. And if you have the ambition, the dedication, the passion, and I know that you do, then you're thinking of taking it to the next level, and this magic word might be podcasting. All right, my special guest today is Keith Rupnik of Radio Links Broadcast Marketing, and he's the distribution and syndication expert for podcasting by professionals. And we are going to talk to you today about some real behind-the-scenes insider info that you can implement into your business right away as a professional speaker. So help me welcome him to Learn to Podcast for Profit. Hello, Keith. Hi, Teresa. You know, we were talking a little bit earlier and it gave it some more thought. If you, you know, think about game changing, we talked about that word game changer. Podcasting can really be a a game changer for maximizing speaking engagements. Well, you know, I really think that by the time that you put yourself out there as a speaker, you've already done so much of the backstory. You know, you're really not starting from scratch. So let's talk about, let's dig a little deeper. Okay. I mean, I <laughs> we've got to dig deeper, Keith, because I've noticed in my career that there is this huge misconception. And I'm a little tongue-in-cheek here, obviously, but this whole become an expert formula, you know, there's a misconception there. And how does what 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 would be that misconception? I mean, and well, how do it, you overcome some of that? Well, it kind of goes like this. All right, you write a book or a curriculum, or you develop a program, and you start to book yourself as a speaker, and then something magical happens, and then you make a whole bunch of money. Uh, I'm good with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So what's wrong with that then? Okay, the, 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 everybody seems a little bit kind of shaky on what that something magical is. <laughs> you know, I keep hearing all these experts saying, all you have to do is write a book and then you'll make all this money. Or right. all you have to do is develop these programs and get it online and then you'll make a bunch of money. But what's that little something magical? You know, I I really kind of, after several years of doing all of that, I feel like I kind of finally found my magic. And um, do you hear my magic right there? I do. I do. It sounds like a grandfather clock. That or a doorbell. No, no, it's the sound of the angels coming down Ah, to give my something magical. But uh, what it is is a podcast, all right? And it is hard work. You know, I admit it. And it does take some time to become good at it. And there are some things about having your own podcast that are frustrating and you know that that's very real right but right if you keep it, after it it really does work and it's not just putting that microphone in front of you and and start talking there's more that goes into that <laughs> well you know there 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 does um there is uh a bit of a procedure to go through. But, you know, if you're a speaker, you're not lazy, so you can learn it. And you've already put together a lot of content. So, I mean, don't you think speakers mm-hmm. are naturals for podcasting? I, I do. Um, I think there's also probably a lot more that, that goes into it, too, when it, when when you put together your, your podcast and you're looking on what's going to aspire you and you probably need 
you know, some tools and, and, uh, and a bag of tricks, if you will. Uh, it's kind of like I get a lot of calls from people who say I'm ready to syndicate my show. Oops. And the first thing they say is, well, uh, I get a lot of calls. Well, what does a lot of calls <laughs> mean? A lot of calls means they probably are, you know, filling up a phone line of, you know, a bank of three calls and they're maxed out. So, so I think speakers, public speakers are probably, um, you know, just as equipped and ready to move to that podcast and maybe even more so because they've mastered some of the things that, uh, some of the real work that goes into creating a podcast and they're not just based upon, well, everyone tells me I have a good voice or I get a lot of calls. Exactly. They have some real skills. They know how to put together a program. They're confident speaking in the front of the room. They have mm-hmm. a multifaceted bag of tricks already. So I think speakers should really, really, if if they're not already doing this, they should think about it. And if they're already doing this, they might should just up their level. So do you want to hear what I think is the number one reason speakers should use podcasting? I know you're going to tell me. Well, I know. <laughs> These rhetorical questions are, are quite effective on the air. But <laughs> um, when you book yourself as a speaker, you have mm-hmm. to be there. So you're limited by this time-space paradigm that we're all still stuck in here mm-hmm. on the planet Earth. But on a podcast, your words live forever in cyberspace. You can reach many more people, both live and in the archives. And it just kind of supports the whole idea that you want mm-hmm. your words to be heard. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, and when I used to do uh, a radio show, I, I remember a manager, a program director once telling me, you don't have to be great every day, but you do have to be there. And that's probably very true with the podcasting. We were talking about, you know, do you say, I'm not going to do a podcast because I'm not an expert speaker yet. No, I think you do want, and you do need to be there. With a podcast, you accomplish two things. You know, you're, you're there, and, um, and you're putting together a, a, a show that is reliant on your area of expertise, and uh, you're visible, and, and you're there. And certainly podcasts can help accomplish that for you. And there's so many ways in which uh, a, a person who speaks in front of others uh, can utilize this. Uh, if you're an event planner or you're putting together huge events, that podcast can live on uh, after that event and it also can act as a prelude prior to the event. I agree totally. I mean, there's so many things you can do with a podcast to generate leads and sales before, during, and after an event. And if you're a speaker at the event, then, um, well, you know, the speaking industry, I think, is changing fast just like podcasting is. Uh, I mean, I know just in the past five or six years, it's become very popular for some of the most celebrated speakers to actually be out of pocket to get a really good speaking opportunity. And these are the events that you really need a little extra sizzle from your marketing efforts, don't you think? I do. I do. And a podcast works for that. Well, and I think that you can look for lots of different ways to take that podcast and um, and uh, cross promote it also too that uh, adds even more value uh, is it social media uh, the local and newspaper and radio interviews that we had talked about earlier um, all of the different events uh, that you could be at uh, become an expert commentator on a local radio show uh, at uh, social events Um, really kind of be that uh, in-your-face, fly-on-the-wall, passive-aggressive individual in promoting your brand using your podcast as the focal point from which everything else points to. Yes, and it's so easy now to provide people with a digital file of your audio. You were talking about technology earlier. Technology has totally turned this around. It has. It really has. And it brings, you know, for example, podcasting 
with a quality microphone and a uh, audio software package that can be downloaded for free from the internet. There's a real good one that I use. It's called Audacity. And you can put together a, your own podcast, mix together the music, and and then talk to others who are doing podcasts like yours. Uh, seek out that instruction on how do you learn about the best practices uh, from a technical standpoint, social media, marketing, getting the word out. And there's there's lots of things that with uh, a minimal investment, but... Uh, some quality time poured into a podcast that you can really come up with a very professional sounding way of promoting your brand and and giving some longevity to your message long after that speaking event, that conference, that phone call. Uh, And podcasts can be a very effective way of doing that. That's right. Now, some of my, I put together a list of some of my favorite ideas to use a podcast to promote yourself as a speaker. Would you like to hear it? I would. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have been shocked if please, you said no. Please, <laughs> please pray tell. <laughs> well, first of all, this is a really good thing to do: is offer to do an interview with the event organizer. This establishes a rapport, and I tell you, I have gotten so many repeat gigs from simply reaching out and saying, I would love to do a podcast or a radio show with you before the event, and it's it's good for both of you. Uh, the second thing, to make and air a commercial for that event on all of your shows and to provide that commercial for the event organizer to use as well because that's once again cross promotion you know your show's being promoted as the speaker at this event third is make yourself a special business card with a free bonus audio that you've created pertaining to the topic that you're going to speak on and have a landing page, you know, a real show page with a list building form on it in order to get this free bonus audio and you just pass it out while you're at the event. Um, Another idea is to offer a free, and you'll pre-record this, download of your content in return for them filling out a form for a contest or whatever you want to do for your list building event. And this is very effective because everybody's going to want a recording of your topic. Now, you can also call the attendees to action with a follow-up podcast. Everyone who went on your list from this event and this follow-up podcast can take your topic to the next level. And it can also be, uh, my next point, uh, create a paid event that follows up on your topic but digs a lot deeper just simply for the new members on your list. So you see you've kind of created uh, a funnel here with your special business card, a follow-up podcast that's free, and then a paid event that's still following your topic. Now, Keith, you were talking about some favorite marketing tips for speakers to add value to their time. And I think that the cross-promotion, and uh, I especially love to become a a guest commentator on one of the radio shows in your community. However, What do you feel is the most important key to success for speakers who are going to start a a podcast here? Well, I think you want to make sure that everything you are doing points to that podcast. Uh, Every email that goes out in the signature box uh, has a link to your podcast. Your social media sites have links to your podcast business card has a URL address where your, um, where your podcast can be heard. Every form of communication that you have with an individual, with a prospect, should point to that podcast. And of course, once they go to the podcast, if that podcast delivers on the expectation, that expectation will be what's in it for the listener. Are you giving information that, uh, that will reinforce maybe something that I learned at a speaking engagement, tell me something new that is, is, is key to my business that I need to remember and to learn about, or just general information, perhaps I want to buy a product or enter into a new field. Um, 
all of those things should be expounded upon in that podcast. And, of course, assuming that it delivers on those expectations, having everything point to it uh, makes it the focal point of what you're doing and it puts it in a position where it becomes organic. Hopefully people are listening to your podcast and sharing it with others. It takes on a life of its own. It does. And people with enough charisma to speak live at events uh, and clearly to speak and communicate clearly on radio are in great demand as celebrity spokespersons, expert commentators, and even gala events in your city need people to be a celebrity MC. So I think you can really build your star power by letting decision makers know in every way possible, like you just said, Keith, that you can be effective in various different forms of media. I agree. I agree. It's an exciting time, and uh, just imagine, uh, you know, you don't have to be that perfect uh, radio personality yet you do have to be an expert you're in in your field and uh and certainly those who are considering podcasts uh are or are working towards becoming experts in their fields and when somebody can drive down uh, the highway and and maybe uh click a link on their smartphone that uh then through bluetooth connects with the uh, the internet device and their dashboard and can easily listen to a podcast that you've generated on a particular subject and at the end of listening to that decides to make reservations to be in an event or to call you to buy your product and that's pretty exciting it's extremely exciting so um i think we've established that it's a good idea to start a podcast if you are a speaker I believe it is. I believe. <laughs> All right. It, is. it really is. You're listening to Learn to Podcast for Profit with Teresa Marone, and my guest today is Keith Rupnick of Radio Links Broadcast Marketing. So we'll be back. Hi there. I'm Teresa Marone, and I'm the Learn to Queen. Join me and my guest expert collaboration partners for an inside look at the problem-solving industry. We want to help you so that you can help others. 